welcome to the Swift Half, your weekly session of chat from the UK OCR and adventure running scene. Each week, pub landlord Alan and our favourite regular Ian discuss races, runners and anything else that comes to mind. So pull up a pew, pour yourself a drink and join us for the Swift Half. You're listening to the 24,601st most popular podcast for people who also listen to musical adaptations of 19th century French romanticism. Hey, my friend, welcome to the Swift Half again. How are you? I'm great, Alan, and I hope all our listeners are great. And welcome to the end of February. Jeez, yeah, this is our last episode in February. I'm not. Sure, I, I can't work out the, the dates. Yeah, you're absolutely right, I think. Because, yeah, next week it will be the 1st of March because it's the 23rd today. Add seven days, that means 30. So, yeah, it will be the 1st of March. So our last February episode. I know. So in one week time, does that mean that all the women are going to be proposing to the men? I mean, in six days' time. Well, six on, days. Yeah, six yeah, days, 29th. 29th. Maybe I, I, I guess um, is this a subliminal message to all of our female listeners out there who haven't tied the knot yet to um, start proposing? It's the it's the only time they've got to wait four years if they miss it this time. Well, ladies, if you're struggling, I can give you Alan's address. <laughs> no, I don't want loads of them. I didn't get no Valentine. I didn't get one Valentine's card. Only one Valentine's card, Ian. This month, this year, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I got one, which you'd you'd expect. Uh, I yeah. presume that it's my fault that we've got a different postie at the moment because our current postie he's out with a bad back. So, and it happened the day after Valentine's Day. So, I, I presume he just put his back out, and that explains why the rest of my cars haven't arrived yet. And you think it's because I moved out that mine hadn't arrived either? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If you go back to your old rented one, you won't be able to get through the front door. <laughs> Just not be that. <laughs> that's so funny. I like that. I like that. Um, let's let's talk about what we're drinking before because before, before we digress, and we are going to digress because there's a lot of the notes for digressing on here today. Let's um, let's find out what are you drinking because you were drinking Prime on Matt B. Davis's weekly show this week again. Taking our sponsors over to the states. I don't know if I took him over to the states. I think Prime is an American company anyway, and they're still not returning my call. But their lawyers got in touch lately, so I'm guessing that's progress. I'm <laughs> hoping it's not a cease and desist, but we, we'll see. Listeners, anyone who's taking that literal, that is a joke. Their lawyers have not got in touch yet. I yet. don't think <laughs> yet. <laughs> We are receiving a lot of return mail from them. But anyway, tonight, courtesy of Tesco's meal deal, because the Tesco is stocking more and more different drinks that I can drink, we've got a Robinson's real fruit drink. Oh, I like Robinson's. They used, didn't they were the original carton drinks they used to get as a kid, Robinson's or was it fruit shoots? It might have been fruit shoots. Robinson's people know mainly for Wimbledon. Yep. The dilute and pop. The, the dilute pop, but this is ready mixed. It's real fruit in every drop, allegedly. Raspberry and apple. And you can tell it's real fruit because it's got five grams of sugar. <laughs> you know, we just call it pop then. Down south, yeah. they call it cordial. Yeah, they, they do. Do you want to know the, the freakiest thing is people who refer to cordial as juice, such as American listeners. No, that's cordial's not juice. Juice is like the juice of a fruit, and that's cordial's not the juice of a fruit. Yeah, if someone offers me orange juice, I don't expect Robinson's. I expect the next question to be, do you want it with pulp or without pulp? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it should be. Juice is freshly squeezed, oranges or apple. How do they squeeze an apple? You need a gorilla to help you. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I'm just thinking, then we have, we have like apple juice, and I'm thinking, how blooming eggs like do they squeeze, squeeze an apple? You need a lot of apples because you think when you bite into an apple, you do get juice, but not so much. No, do you think the pulp it down? I presume it's some kind of liquidize, liquidization process. Uh, there's a malcorism for you, 
But yeah, I, I presume it's like how do you make a banana smoothie? Yeah, I, I was let my listeners into a little bit of what I do when I'm not doing stuff like this. I was doing watercolor painting this week, and I've seen painting on telly. You know, with the ske squeeze loads of paint on the palette. Apparently, with watercolors, don't you? you only put a really tiny bit on, and then you add water to it. So I'm thinking this is what they do with apple juice. They get one apple and then add loads of water to it, and then it comes out as apple juice. Would make a lot of sense to be fair. And can we just go down this watercolor tangent for <laughs> for a second? Because this is something I was not aware of. So did you sit outside and and paint a canal? No, no. I um, sat inside. I got inspiration. We go. I'm going holiday soon, so I was like a bit of inspiration. I want something nice holidayified. So I I painted a sunset on a with an island in the front of it, and yeah, oh, in watercolor. I used purples and pinks and oranges and yellows and blues and i learned all these techniques um of how to do it how to get the 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 uh, horizon line right and everything else it's on my facebook here and you need to have a look i'll have a look i must be blaming the facebook algorithms because i've not seen it i do have to ask for did you do it from memory from a picture or just watching i looked at a few pictures to get inspiration but I just then did it off my own, what I wanted to do, do. So I didn't copy a picture or anything like that. It was literally, what do I want to do? And yeah, but I looked at a few pictures for inspiration. I am really impressed because I, I had no idea that you, you did watercolours. This has opened up a whole new line of podcasting. I, I didn't do watercolours until this week. This is my first ever attempt at it. This was your first ever attempt at watercolours. Wow. Yeah. I've I've never painted since the last time I painted walls in the house, obviously. Um, but I've never painted since I was a kid at school. You know when you drew stick men and things like that. And yeah, this was my first ever watercolor. I thought it was actually classic, and it was um, it was different. It was enjoyable. You know, two and a, two two and a half hours of painting. I'm looking this up while I'm looking this up. Can you just have a listen to what you're drinking? Oh. Yeah. So, uh, well, tonight I am on a shandy, but a shandy with a difference because I'm actually drinking apple juice. I'm drinking Koppenberg cider um, with lemonade, um, only because it's the only thing we had in the fridge and I forgot to go to the, the off licence because it was late at night. I finished work, didn't get a chance. So, yeah, it was a bit of Koppenberg cider with lemonade is what I'm drinking. Not on a meal deal. Not on a meal deal, unfortunately, although it should be. I just look at so you did both of these pictures. There's two pictures here. There's two pictures, yeah. One's mine, one's Paula's. Mine's the sunset. Okay. Paula's really talented. Paula's very talented at it, yes. She's um she learnt me how to do it and that she's very talented at, at the painting. I, I was gonna say if this second what not to knock your effort, which I'll get to in a second, but if this second one was yours, I'd well, I, I'd be calling you out as a liar and said you bought it because it is really, <laughs> really Good. Let, let's share these, please. Can we throw them in the, in the pub at some point? Um, because I think people who may not be your friend on Facebook need to see these. But I do love your sunset as well because it's a lovely, I'll describe it to, to the listener, it's a lovely tropical scene with some palm trees, glorious sunset in, in the background with all the different colours as they, they're hitting. And you can also see a boat with... I believe that's Ian Adamson with all of the World OCR subs sailing towards this island. It's, it's remarkable, Alan. Inspiration, Ian. That's where I got my inspiration from. I, I, I presume as much, but yeah, it is really, really good. And I, I like the fact that uh, on your desert island, it's not quite deserted. You've also got little bits of uh, shooting up grass as well. Yeah, so it was old days because it was supposed to be the sun was on there, so it was more of a um, in the shadow. So the sun was out shining the island, and it was like, you know, sometimes when you get onto wispy grass that comes up on sand and things like that, yeah, a bit different, I thought. But because I made Paula do OCR, she decided to make me do painting, you know, which I th and I've enjoyed it. You know, she enjoyed OCR, I like painting. I think Paula's a lot better at painting than you are at OCR. <laughs> she's never won a you know she never won a prize i've won a wolf running and that's how that matters this would win a wolf run 
<laughs> that would have been a wolf run. <laughs> Let's move on from paintings, and because you got a good segue there into one of my topics. Last week we talked about Musical League, and we mentioned that James Burton, we didn't think he'd won a wolf run. He actually reached out to him, and he has won a wolf run. So he has, got something. He common. has won a wolf run. He has won a wolf run. Yeah, he has won a wolf run. He didn't win the Musical League though. Okay. And I don't know who's won it. So a few people have reached out to me. So Mark Dixon's won it in 2019. He won the league and the Masters. So at age 42, by the way, he told me. So well done to Mark. Mark's an amazing athlete. So, you know, um, Sean Wilde, 2015, got second in Masters. 2016, got third in Masters. Um, and James Burton got second overall, but he never gave me what year. So I'm going to ask our listeners. I want to ask the listeners, if you know who won the Mustico League, yeah, let us know. Let's share it. I'm, I'm interested to find out who's won leagues in the past. It's a shame that history like that has kind of been abandoned because it was held online. It's weird. We think that everything lasts forever on the internet, and it really doesn't. No, I, I actually had a look, and the, mus the Musticle has gone. Um, funny that I actually put musticle.co.uk, and it said can't find. I put musticle.com in, and it took me to some... Um, fantasy, not that type of fantasy, by the way, listener, but like fantasy Star Wars-y type channel, musticle.com. I'm not sure which would have been worse. <laughs> of what, Alan, can't you just check 2011 yeah. Mudsicle? Yeah. I think I won it that year. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, the year that it used to Start, the year before it started, I think, wasn't it, in or something like that? <laughs> I, I can't help the facts. <laughs> you can't help the facts. Like that. And I think you I, won the Masters. I, I, won, I must have won the Masters, yeah. <laughs> How's you your running going master? on? How's your running oh, going, running. by the way? Yeah. Um, it's going okay. I'm actually sat here. Have you ever had an experience where you can just you feel your legs and then you... Put your hands on your knees, and your knees are red hot. Yes. And uh, today has been a rest day. I, I ran yesterday. I, I did a treadmill session, which was horrible, really, really horrible. It was 8K. It was meant to be 8K, 1K fast, 1K slower, but still not recovery speed. In the end, I ended up doing it 0.5K fast, 0.5K slower but i did it um the full 8k and yeah today i'm just hands on knees and it feels like radiators are on them wow i, I sometimes get that not so much the hot knees but i get um hot ankles the day after it's my ankles that are a little bit bit dodgy but not my knees if we've got any doctors or any physios please let us know if it means anything yeah you know, and not just that i'm old no uh, my runnings took a setback at minute because I've been ill for the last two weeks. So I went for my first run last night and I, um, my best buddy, Jamie, can't run at the moment. Um, he's, he bought a new car. So I'll give the reason why he can't run. So he purchased a brand new car, a Ford Ranger, you know, one of these trucky things. He picked it up, I want to say last Wednesday or last Thursday evening. So he picked it up straight from work, went to the garage, picked it up, absolutely you know, brand spanking, pure white, got all the latest gear on, um, everything else. He then went to work with it on Thursday morning, um, absolutely fine. Uh, they have to, he had to go to some job over in Hull. So he jumps on the M1, comes off the roundabout of the M1, parks on the, the roundabout, let the cars go by, and a big truck hit him from behind. So less than 14 hours after he purchased his new car, he now no longer has a car <laughs> or a truck. Does he, uh, do, does he have legs? He does have legs, but he is in a bad way. He's, um, and I say in a bad way, listeners, don't tell us wrong. He's, he's fine. He can walk. He can talk. All of that stuff. He's not in hospital, um, but he's having dizzy spells and he's, he, he can't run at the moment. His, his whole body is aching. Um, but the truck hit him. I want to say 20, 30 mile an hour. So it wasn't going fast, but he was stationary. Um, oh, that, in a big truck. Was there, was there anything in front of Jamie when he got hit? As in, was he pushed into anything? No, he wasn't. So he, he, he pulled up to let the cars go by. 
and he he, he actually said that he'd, he'd just taken his um, foot off the hat off the brake because he was about to start moving when it hit him. So he, it was a quite lucky that it pushed him forward rather than still. Oh, that, that... That is fortunate because, yeah, had it been pushing against a brake, his car would have moved. But, yeah, it being freewheeling probably helped him a little bit. So his car's back in the garage and... No, the car's written off. The car is written off. off. It's completely written off. (laughs) So he's got to find a new car again. Oh, dear. On the plus side, if there is such a thing as a plus side of things like this... It shouldn't have depreciated in value in 14 days. So he should get 14 hours. 14 hours. 14 hours. Oh, God. <laughs> he, yeah, he should at least get the money back that he paid into and be able to get a like for like. Definitely, definitely. Um, the One of the funny parts about it, though, Ian, is the name of the company who owned the lorry that hit him. Heinz? Breaks. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the good of the was breaks foods. <laughs> so, yeah. It was funny. Oh dear. What did the lorry just expect him to be moving quicker than he did? I, I don't know. He, he was it was stuck when he, he he was actually stationary, he wasn't even moving. He wasn't moving at all when it hit him. So yeah. Oh, I don't God. no one knows. It's the insurance people do, deal with it all. Um right. But yeah. He's just more fortunate that he wasn't banged into something else because that could have been catastrophic. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, so I'm struggling. I'm running, struggling with running in that moment, but but we're getting there. We're getting there. So shall we go talk about a bit of news that's happened? Yeah, should we go on Titan Warrior first? Oh, this is mine, isn't it? So Titan Warrior, as we all know, is coming up twenty third, twenty fourth of of March, um, and. I've been like looking at, you know, Titan Warrior, you know, thinking about it, you know, shall I make it, shan't I make it? And last week we talked about seeing adverts come up, you know, when you start looking at stuff. Well, all of a sudden I'm seeing cow posts and I can only put it down to Titan Warrior. Everywhere I go, I'm seeing these Highland cattle now on every reel or video that I see. So I am sharing them on our group because I'm finding it quite funny. Um, But I'm just seeing loads of cows everywhere. I'm trying to connect Titan Warrior to to cows. Is it just because their symbol is the cow? I think it must be, but they also had Hamish there last year, which was the um, Highland cow. So I'm I'm just thinking that that's the only connection I can see what it's about. Um, is that we've got I'm getting cow posts. I don't look at cows normally. So I'm going to ask the obvious question: How fresh is your milk now? <laughs> yeah, that milk is very very. Bad. Um, but the funny posts have you seen them because they're, they're the Highland cow posts that I keep sharing so I'm, I am only sharing the Highland cow ones for Titan Warrior but I find it quite funny that um, there's a whole there's people doing reels on Highland cows um, and I actually find that a bit funny as well it's probably for safety we might have had this conversation previously but when my friend from America when Nick came to visit and people met him at Tough Mud and I think some people also met him at uh, Nuts because he went and did the four-lap Nuts race. I think he podiumed, actually. He, he did quite quite well. But he was asking about deadly animals because he currently lives in Arizona and most of what lives in Arizona could kill you. Yeah. So we were curious what the deadliest UK animal was. And I suggested the Loch Ness Monster, but apparently... He meant things that you can actually see. He he didn't take my word for it that Nessie is there. She just goes on holiday a lot. But the actual answer is cows. Cows are responsible for killing more people in the UK than any other animal. I actually knew that. I knew that as a fact. Um, I think it, it's it's mainly in Ireland rather than... That, oh, that's where the most deaths happen are in, are in Ireland, not so much on main, mainland England. Um, but yeah, in the UK, they are the um, the most deadly in the whole of the UK. So Northern Ireland has a vicious cow problem. A vicious cow problem, yeah, yeah. I think one year there was something like six six farmers killed or six hands killed in in like Northern Ireland um, through cows. It's because the stampede. When the stampede, they actually l- last year at um, the race that shan't be mentioned, 
through the night, the cows um, decided that they didn't like the lights from head torches. So they were going to go through this gate. And one of the cows decided to go down the wrong side of the gate, which then pushed the gate open a little bit. And um, because half the cows were going down one side, which was a dead end, they wanted to get to the other side where all the cows were going through the edge. And they literally, they bent this metal gate in half. They just crushed it. It was unbelievable. It's kind of scary how powerful they are because you just think of cows as being mundane animals, don't you? You do. Um, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely, they're very, they're big, they're heavy. They're big and they're heavy and that's the scary part. But talking of animals, we have got a segue into another race that has animals on it. And also in Derby, they are now ramping up their social media presence, Bog Commander, on the 11th of May. I didn't even realise it was in May. I didn't realise it was in May this year. For some reason, it always sneaks up on us, Bog Commander. I can't explain why it is, because maybe it's because we keep changing the date, because I, I swear it's not usually that day. I, I want to say it's usually June time. I, I've never known on that day. I'm, I'm sure it was early May last year, um, like three, four weeks before um, Farmyard. This time it's the week before. Obviously, they've not chose the 18th because it's it's Tough Mudder weekend. However, the 11th, good or bad, they attract different people, but we've got nuclear races on that weekend. We've got Spartan on that weekend. So I don't know what why they've chose that weekend. Seems very, you know, big weekend now. Yeah, yeah particularly when they do own their own land. Because a lot of times, when there's a clash, it's because of land issues. Yeah. Whereas... They could do it the week before or the week after. Well, they, they wouldn't do it the week after because that's tough mudder, maybe. But they could definitely do it the week before. Maybe it's just a case of because it is still working farm. Maybe it's just a case of when they can guarantee that the land will be free. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't gone for the fourth. You know, because they always put very good slogans on their t-shirt, and obviously May the fourth bit of Star Wars here, I'm thinking, you know, a pig in a, um, because their logo is the pig or the hog or whatever you want to call it, um, in some type of of Darth Vader uniform or something like that on their T-shirts. But I thought that would have been a great gimmick for them on the fourth. Would have been really good because, be, like you say, could have done Darth Vader with the, with the pig or and make it into a Jedi, throwing a, a dry robe on it. Yeah, yeah. Something different, wasn't it? So. Definitely. But we should say, if you're not going to Spartan, you're not going to nuclear, and you're in the north of England, definitely give it a look, because it is a great race. I might check and see what I'm doing that particular weekend. I, I suspect I might be busy, because it's still the fitness racing season on, ongoing. But if I'm free, I, I might might pop over, because I did enjoy it when we, we went, although I was terrified of the zip line. <laughs> I haven't done the zip line there yet. I, I love their obstacles. I've got to admit, they they've put some good obstacles on. The death slide's good, although I think it should be into water and not onto onto a bag. But that's just my my opinion. I love the terrain they've got. The hills are absolutely phenomenal. Um, they've got some of the best hills to run on, um, and they make good use of them. And the bog at the bottom, you know. It gets its, it's got its name Bog Commander. That bog is the the deepest one I've ever ever run in, and I've done fell runs and things like that where you go through some pretty deep bogs. But that is that's knee deep. When you go under that tree on that tree after the crawl, it is knee deep. I think there's a good video of me on the UK OCR Instagram of just walking, and then I'm about um, two foot less tall. Yes. Shorter was the word I was looking for, there. But yeah, it it just catches you out, doesn't it? Definitely, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's it's a great event. Um, oh. I don't know if it's if it's British Obstacle Sports licensed this year. I, I know there was potentially talking about it. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be it'd be good if it was. This is quite interesting, though. They now have a obstacle free route as well, which is six point five k. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of events moving moving around now in terms of what they're doing. As you know, we, we did it ours. 
there's a whole some of the smaller events, and I and I put a little note on here. We've seen this week over in the states, rugged maniac have decided to to call it a day on the OCR scene. Although they're doing other things, they've called it a day on the OCR scene. We're now seeing a little bit of this come over here to the UK. Some of the smaller races are are potentially struggling. OCR seems to be because we don't have as many races now, and this is my opinion, and I'll say this, because we don't have as many races, there's not as much focus on the fun side of it compared to, you know, your big races, your Tough Mudders, your Spartans, your Nuclears. You know, people like like Nuts, they've moved to one day, you know, from two day two day events. And a lot of the other OCRs have moved into that running section, you know. Um, was it go go insane? They've come back and made it much more of a running race rather than obstacle courses. And it looks like Bog Commander's going a little bit down that route as well and offering offering double double trouble, if you want to call it. Well, I don't know what you want to call it. Double options. Yeah, as I've more you can run as many laps of their six kilometer course as they can handle before the cut off time of two PM. So wave one goes out at ten o'clock. So that gives you Four hours, so the average person could get run twice if they if they tried it. You know what? It's not actually that bad a price either. It's fifty five quid, Alan. It's a good price. It's always been around about that price. It's pretty good. Um, it's a great venue. The only downside to it is, uh, from my opinion, and it's not a downside, is that when you're finished. You've got to walk up the hill back to the car park, and that's the killer of the race. That hill back up to the car park can take as long long to walk as it can to get around the course. Really can. And we've still got the 260-metre um, zip line there as well, Alan. And while I've been messing around, you know, looking online, here's something interesting for you. Do you remember you were talking to Rumpy a few episodes ago? Yes. And you were talking about how races just don't exist anymore, and you were talking about up in Cumbria, there weren't any races? I was, yes. I think you forgot Gelt Gladiator. Yeah, no, I, I did mention. I think I did think I mentioned Gelt Gladiator, um, but that's the only one that's up there now, isn't it? Because I haven't seen Mad March Mare anymore at Exum, so I'm not sure they're still going ahead. Um, and what was the, what was the other one that was up there? There was uh, Badass Mucker, I think. Badass Mucker. I haven't seen that that for a while up there. Well, I've not seen it advertised. Well, let's give Gelt a quick show to. It's the weekend after. A race that shan't be mentioned. So 25th of May? 26th? 25th? Um, oh, I thought you were June. Am I looking at the wrong date yeah. for you? One second. The race that I shan't be mentioned is 18th of May. <laughs> oh, that, that's not good. I was... <laughs> you're going to laugh. I was looking at an old um, Let's Do This, which had you on 3rd of June. Oh, <laughs> that's an old one. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. That's the first thing that pops up, by the way, when you search Farmyard Jam Derby. Oh, wow. Wow. Anyway, so yeah, it's not the weekend after after you. It's the weekend after you two years ago. Yeah. But it is Saturday the 8th of June, Sunday the 9th of June, up in Walton, the United, um, United Kingdom, of course. And they've got a 10-mile course. Guess how much, Alan? I think there's about £60, isn't it? 40 quid. Oh, wow. Wow. That is very good. Currently 40 quid for 10 mile, 40 quid for 10k, 35 quid for 6k, and a junior 4k at 26 quid. That is really good prices. That that's that's phenomenal prices. He should point out that it is a three mile course. So you're doing loops, which may or may not be for everyone. Um, so there's 20 obstacles in the three mile course, and yeah, so the 10 mile completes three laps. I'm guessing three laps in a little bit. Um, 10k complete two two laps and you get a custom tech t-shirt there's water stations there's changing facilities there's a bag drop everything you you'd expect it doesn't say medal but you get a custom t-shirt yeah i think some events now have taken away doing both and some are giving t-shirts away some are giving medals away um i think it depends on on what race you're doing they always got a, they always used to get a medal at gelt gladiator so i do know they used to always get a medal Maybe you do, just not added it. Uh, car parking is five quid um, for a day, which is pretty standard when you're parking in a field because you've got to pay for repairing the field. You have yeah. that at the race that shan't be mentioned as well. 
And yeah, so it's in Walton, Brompton, up in Cumbria. I'm just going to Google it. Which part of Cumbria is it? You've got me. You've got me. I'm not sure on that myself, Ian, without without looking. Well, I'm about to look. Let's have a look. So on a map, oh, it is the, the far side. So it's just up near Carlisle, not a million miles away from Hadrian's Wall. So our Scottish listeners, it may be the close OCRs to several of you. Yeah, that's good, though. That's, um, they can come down across the border. It can. It's actually not. Not that far from, from Gretna Green. Oh, wow. That is fairly close. And that's only, what's that, three hours for me? Three hours yeah, for give, me? Yeah, give or take. Yeah, so have a look look at it, uh, listener. Let's support local races. Definitely. We should always support local races. For me, it's it's one of the things that we don't do enough of anymore. We used to be doing it so much. We still attend the big races, but we would go so much to little races. But I guess... You know, we're in a cost of living crisis here and, you know, people's money is not as, doesn't go as further now. You know, I, I, I'm i not going to say go too much detail. We've talked about it before, but, you know, when, when your gas and electric bill goes from 60, 70 pound, which is what it was pre-COVID, to now we're looking at 300 pound in, in the winter. It's a lot of money for for people to find when wages have not, not matched them. No, absolutely. And you also your priorities can shift as well because people are still spending on leisure activities, but you you may downgrade it. Do we call it like the lipstick effect that um you know, people would go from if they usually eat out, they'll then go to a takeaway, or if they usually have a takeaway, they'll maybe buy a nicer meal to cook cook at home. And yeah. You might buy yourself a nicer lipstick because it's a nicer treat than going out and buying, um, say, a new dress, for example. It's absolutely spot on. You are absolutely spot on. Is that's what people do, and I think we see it all in everything we do. I went through Barnsley Town Centre the other day, and it was market day. And normally it is it is full. It's absolutely packed with people, with stall holders, and everything. And it was damp. It was damp, but there wasn't. I bet there was only thirty percent of the normal stalls there in the town centre, and the town centre was empty. Um, and I mean empty. It was like literally, I walked from one end of the town to the other in in less than five minutes and saw maybe twenty, thirty people. And this was at eleven a.m. in the morning. It it seems to be like throughout wherever I, you go now, it's just not as busy as where it used to be. Yeah, it's fascinating because I was having this conversation with someone at work. Your experience there mirrors mine when I'm going to town. However, if you go into a city, and my local one is Manchester, you went to Leeds quite recently when you mm. did that race. Their streets are packed. Yes, they are. You're right. The, the cities are still are still packed. Um, Sh- Sheffield, I went to Sheffield a couple of months ago, and that was still busy. Um, yeah. Yeah, if I go into local towns, say sometimes you feel guilty going into a, a shop and not buying something. Have you ever had that uh, that feel that you go into a shop and you're the only one there and you kind of feel, I need to buy something. Otherwise, this person is sat there and they've not actually earned enough to pay their wage and be on the shop. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. You know, Especially when you go into little corner shops and things like that, you know, it's... Um... And I tend to, I do use a lot of little corner shops as opposed to big supermarkets. I tend to, to shop local um, rather than use big supermarkets. And that's why you've no money. And that's why I've got no money. <laughs> You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, should we carry on the gloom and doom and talk about rugged maniac? Yeah. <laughs> the rugged, rugged maniac. Um, shocked in, is, is to say the least. Uh, I noticed this on OCR Buddy the other day. I don't know who released it or whatever, but that's where I saw it first. Um, very, very shocked. Good thing they're giving... I mean, it's, this is in America, so it's, it, it doesn't affect us as much over here unless we're going to go over there and do one. Great that they're giving refunds out. Um, but have you seen that OCR Buddy reached out to them and asked them why and what their response was? Yeah, I, I've never seen that called a response this side of Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to our listeners. Appreciate your response, Russ. 
However, please know we aren't going to comment comment any further. End of story. <laughs> I read that. I was a bit confused. Like, did Ross say something else? And is there some something else of a story? But yeah, it it's fascinating because for the most part, we're just aware of it because they were a sponsor of obstacle racing media for years, weren't yeah, they? You know, Matt it. would talk about rugged maniac and so many like a lot of races here where you can run in the morning um, competitively and then you can run a flimsy lap because you can just run as many as you you want a bit like bog commander that we've just been chatting about a, a second ago so it's only like a great race series but it occupied that area just below tough mudder in that it was a national race but i didn't realize this until i, I looked into it a bit more obstacle racing isn't just what they do they also do regular runs and themed runs as well yeah, and this is what I talked about earlier on, is that some of the ones that are now pulling out of OCR is because they've they've either gone something into do something else or OCR was was something else for them. Yeah, and it's no longer profitable. So they'll do, I think Rugged Maniac does like a hot chocolate run or they probably do a pizza run and a colour run, that that kind kind of thing. And it just makes me a bit sad in a way because this is going to sound a bit snobbish, but I always thought that OCR was a sport in and of itself. And it is. It is to, to us. It undoubtedly is. But I always kind of thought that everyone else thought that way. And to think that some events companies are just treating it like a zombie run, which were popular for about a year, is just a little bit sad. And I guess the best comparison i can make to it is rat race yeah it it, it is it, that is probably a very very good comparison but yeah rat race yes we all love their events but as soon as it wasn't bringing them in enough revenue they deemed it not good enough to be a loss leader even though i'd argue that stuff like dirty weekend would bring people in who would then try the other rat race events yeah yeah it does, it does seem a little bit bit strange. But if they're not getting the numbers in, they're not getting the numbers, are they? And at the end of the day, you've got to, it's a, they've got to make that call, haven't they? And anyone doing OCR either has to have a very good business plan, have very low overhead. So if you own your own land, it really comes in handy. Or you've got to accept it's a passion project like the race that shan't be named, and you're doing it because you enjoy it. Yeah, and and you know. As passion projects go, you've got to be mindful that you know you're not going to make money. You've got to you're doing it for the community rather than to make money. Sometimes, yeah. And I actually talked about this on a podcast that's going to come out next week, Alan, because they pointed out to me we we were just comparing the rise of like High Rocks and not the downgrade of OCR, but we're comparing the rise of High Rocks in the 2020s to OCR in the 2010s. Yeah. And they pointed out something to, to me. They hadn't meant to, but I realized something that what exercise activity were we all doing in the 2010s? What was the big thing that everyone loved doing? Ooh, um, well, I didn't. <laughs> well, you, you didn't. You, you learned running by running lamppost to lamppost. The origins of Muddy Dog are going to be made into a feature film <laughs> soon and it will win a BAFTA. <laughs> but yeah, I know you didn't. But boot camps? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they really were. Yeah, there was a lot of boot camps around then, weren't there? In the 2010s, everyone was in a boot camp. Yeah. Or there was a boot camp in every single park. And I don't know if it's because the weather's got um, worse, but outside of one that our good friends, uh, Neil Raby and Heather Raby run, and even that's gone in indoors now for the most part, Boot camps are kind of a thing of the past now. Very much so. There used to be one in my town, and that's that's no longer go, going. So, yeah, you, you're quite right. Um, boot, boot are people camps, getting softer and moving inside? Maybe. But, yeah, boot camps, uh, SAS, Who Dares Wins, that kind of thing. They are all the range, weren't they? Yeah, they were. And what goes hand in hand with them? OCR. Okay. So everyone, like you said, got perhaps got softer or decided... I'm not 
I don't want to spend 40 quid or, or whatever just getting dirty and uh, messing around in, in a field. I can either go run myself or I could spend that go to a gym. Oh, I'll go and do group classes. Oh, I'm quite liking this group class, beat CrossFit or whatever. What goes hand in hand with a group class? High rocks and gyms are becoming more and more popular. There seems to be one popping up every week somewhere. Particularly the group class ones, which are not necessarily CrossFit. They're, mm. they're just boutique gyms, which are teaching you to do hybrid fitness or functional fitness. Yeah. And I, and I think as well, you know, when you look on social media at this moment in time, because that's where we get a lot of a lot of what we want to do from, you know, what people want to do. There is just a lot, a lot of influencers doing fitness, you know, people taking pictures in the gym, you know, everywhere you go. You can't, you can't go to a gym now without somebody having a camera stuck, stuck on floor and, you know, the lighting shining and while they're working out and things like that, no matter what time you go um, in the day. So yeah, where before you got people posting and run up and down hills in pitch black doing boot camps. You know, you, I, that's a very, very good point. Ian. And it might be combined with the evolution of of Facebook and social media. And back in the day, your profile picture, you wanted it to be people looking at you thinking you did cool stuff. And OCR is cool. Yeah, It looks cool. Rolling under barbed wire, jumping over fire, it looks cool. But you've gone from that to a more aesthetic thing it's now all about if you can get that perfect picture of you with washboard abs or if you can't that lovely picture of me and you alan uh, with the t-shirts that looked uh, three sizes too small <laughs> only three sizes too small i was being generous <laughs> you certainly are Ian. you're being very generous but yeah it, it is it is fascinating and i wonder if there's anything in it, and I'm not saying it's the death of OCR, but a natural progression has kind of been taken away with the death of boot camps. So we think that maybe OCR is going to maybe come back again when when everyone's had enough of stopping indoors and can't get that perfect body. They're going to go back to the, the beer barrel bellies and start doing OCR again. Potentially, because don't forget, a lot of the OCR thing was born out of us feeling too comfortable with our life mm. yeah, because we all became office-based and sedentary and that kind of thing. And that led to us wanting to get in touch with nature and, and that. And so if I was running an OCR, I'd be looking at ways of kind of tapping into what people currently want when it comes to getting outdoors. They want sustainability, don't they? They, yeah. they want things like that maybe we need more wooden obstacles maybe we definitely need more wooden medals i love a race with wooden medals and i never thought i'd say that as long as it's not the, the balsa ones you know I, i'm not i'm not keen on the the really thin balsa ones it's got to be some not just a straight up round medal it's got to be something a little bit different um a little bit different yeah no yeah. I, absolutely but yeah it's a fascinating topic and we probably can't go into it but listener get in touch what do you think how many, well, firstly, how many boot camps do you know still exist? And secondly, do you think the downfall of the boot camps and the uprising of the indoor gym fanatics and group classes has contributed to the end of OCR? Not the end of OCR, the... How, the decline the, of the local races. There we go. Well, the decline of the soft middle. Yeah. I always say this. The big races will hopefully always survive. The small ones, which either have their own land or have very little overheads, will also stay with us. It's always the soft middle ones, our ram runs, our reaper runs, that kind of thing. They're the ones which were always in danger. Yes. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Um, talking, though, of OCR not dying, we got some new patrons this weekend. We did, and we love them all. We do. So um big thank you to Katie Joyce and Dasa Scanella for joining us on the Patreon train. And you listeners can join us. So if you're not already on the Patreon train, click the links in the description. You can join us on the Patreon train. Shall we talk about British obstacle sports? Let's talk about British obstacle sports. What have you done recently? Well, have you had your email come out to vote? 
I did. Thank you. And as you could expect, Alan, within minutes, I'd moved on to the next thing and I really need to vote sometime soon. So, well, Ian, you have only got until Sunday, March the 3rd to cast your vote. Now, I'm voted and I quite like the voting system, Ian. So you could click what you wanted and then you could click none of the above. Um, but then they're doing a little bit of marketing behind the scenes. And I quite liked it because the marketing to us, like, are you female fitting these age groups? But then there was about, have you got a disability? And it wasn't just a physical disability. It was also mental disabilities as well. So I quite like it. They're doing a little bit of marketing behind the scenes because they asked, why did you get into OCR, you know, or Ninja Sports? Does it help with your with your health um, and things like that? So I quite liked it. I filled it fully in. Um, I thought it was very interesting. I think it, I would be interesting to see the results off the back of it because I clicked. It helps me with both my mental and my physical health. And, and I think a lot of people will do, but I'd be interested to see if that's the, that's the result from it all. I, I hope they put out some anonymized information from it so yeah. just give overall because it is the kind of thing that that's interesting and particularly say from differently abled athletes because i, I do think that could be a real growth area for obstacle racing definitely definitely i think everyone should do it um on the back of it though as i said it closes sunday march 3rd if you've let your membership lapse if you rejoin before february 29th you can actually get back in as well. That's so good news. Get the vote. Yeah. A couple of other things. Um, British Obstacle Sports will be supporting the UK OCR series and the Scottish series as normal. They are also going to be supporting the 3K series that's been recently been launched, which we talked about a few months ago. A few weeks ago, not months. A few weeks ago on the show. Um, more to come on that as, as they announced. But British Obstacle Sports are also supporting that, which I think is great as well. It's great when they, they support everything. And that's what we want them to do. We don't necessarily need them to run everything, but it's great when they do run stuff. But just giving that support network is what it should all be about. Definitely, definitely. And the new OCR trail event format has been added to the rules. They were added in December, if you remember. They've now licensed McTuff's Really Muddy events on May 19th in Aberdeen. And Pippingford Park on June the 9th. So, that yes, McTuff is now a licensed event on the OCR Trail Series. Perfect. I love that there's also the OCR Trail Series. Yeah, no, I love it. It's OCR Trail, I love it. Um, and the final bit of news from them. We mentioned last week we had James on uh, as well last week, and we talked about Tough Mudder um, being race eight, because we haven't quickly got seven in there, sevens to come, race eight. Um, in the UK OCR race series. If you are a member of British Obstacle Sports, in the newsletter that's going out this weekend, probably Monday latest, there will be the 30% discount code in there. So, and that's worth, if you're not a member of British Obstacle Sports, getting a 30% discount for Tough Mudder, it's worth joining, isn't it? Absolutely. It's definitely worth uh, joining because you get your money back straight away. Instant. One, one purchase, you've got, you've, got, you've got your money back. So, yeah. Sign up, guys and girls, um, and get your 30% discount. Right. right. Anything else on British Hub School, or are we all done? We've done on British Hub School. Do you want to give us some um, fitness racing news? Because I know there's quite a lot of events being sold out and things like that recently. Yeah, it's kind of an irony, isn't it? We were talking earlier about the decline in some way of OCR. Meanwhile, fitness racing is enjoying what OCR was experiencing in 2015 when all you need to do is stick a flag in the floor declare yourself open to the business and you can sell out left right and center I, there's more to it than, than that listener <laughs> i've been facetious and particularly with some of these races we know they've worked hard so remember last last week alan as we were recording we said conquer fitness level seven in september was very close to selling out it actually sold out, despite your best efforts to get the episode up, it actually <laughs> sold out before the episode went up. Um, so that's now sold out. Um, Deadly Dozen in June is sold out. I'll come back to Deadly Dozen in a second. 
Affex Brom is also sold out and they've put on an extra day as well. So if you missed out the first time on Affex and Birmingham, go and try and get a ticket to day two. Deadly Dozen is an interesting one. Do you know, Alan, I often talk about to succeed in life and business, you've got like three options. And one of them, you're not succeeding, but your three options are greater than, less than, different to. Yeah. So if you take someone on head to head, you've got to be greater than them. Otherwise, you're going to be less than and you probably don't want to be less than. But sometimes being less than, you can still make money. So it's not a terrible thing. However, if you don't want to be and you definitely can't be greater than, be different to. And that's what Deadly Dozen is trying to do. And they've got lots of ideas of this. But this might be a first within the fitness racing industry. They've got a 250 page book out. Or what, to explain fitness racing or? It's a combination of various things, would you believe? Oh, wow. Tell me more. It is. I will just pull it up on, on Amazon. Is it? I had it up a second ago. Do we have to purchase this then? I'm assuming we have to purchase this. It is a purchase. Uh, it is training manual and rule book. So it is the training manual for doing his race. It's also a little bit of life philosophy as well so it guides you through each aspect of race and teaches you to effectively develop all 12 components of physical fitness teaches you about the rules and regulations of what obviously you can look that look them up and there are over 100 program examples so it's kind of like a training book oh wow and also serves as like a bible for this race i think on kindle it's only just come out so of course your know, prices will probably fluctuate. At Kindle at the moment, it's $17.99. I was fortunate enough, um, I've received a pump copy, I guess is the correct word. And I, I've had a, a quick read through it because it's going to be a future guest, so it made sense. I've had yeah. a quick flip through. It is really interesting because I'm not just saying it this because he gave me a free copy, but... I have bought a lot of books in the past. I have bought a lot of obstacle racing books, which are just cash-ins. Yeah. I have once bought a flag football book about flag American football, which consisted of the rules of a particular league, and that's all it talked about. And I spent like 12 quid on that book. This is not a cash-in. This actually has quite a bit of substance behind it. Oh, so, wow. I just thought I'd highlighted it here. And yeah, listeners may wish to wish to purchase it, may wish not to. It's definitely lo- worth keeping an eye on and it's definitely worth trying to get on their next race because I, I think it might have legs. Like it, like it. Coming soon, 2024, UK OCR book. <laughs> <laughs> like we can write a book in one year. <laughs> we, can't, we can't write an article in one year and you mind a book <laughs> that's true speaking of which anyone wants to write articles for the website we do still have non-paying positions um available oh speaking of deadly dozen shout out to our good friend matt rigby who is now a deadly dozen master coach and i just love the idea of someone being called deadly dozen master coach <laughs> best name ever that's um, like the ninjas into it that's like the ninjas it is Master Ninja. Uh, somewhere else, um, we should talk about Allure, which is happening. This weekend. Do you have how to watch it up, or do you want me to go through it? Well, I'm I'm, I'm only going to watch it on Obstacle Racing Media, because I don't know anywhere else that's that's got it up. I know Matt will be doing live live um, Instagrams, or, or not, maybe, well, maybe taped to record Instagram um, stories and things like that. So I'm going to be watching that constantly. Is it going to be watched live? Can we can we see it live somewhere? You can. If you go on Obstacle Racing Media's YouTube channel, the, the stream's already up there, ready. Uh, Lua Infinity, Tough Mudder live stream. So it is the live. It will start on Saturday, local time, 8 a.m. UK time will be 5 a.m. So it's not terrible for us, particularly when it's an eight-hour race. Yeah, and if you're in America, well, it's through the night. It is um, that would be midnight Eastern time. Is Matt filming it, or is he just hosting it for Tough Mudder? Do we know that? I'm not a hundred percent. He is 
working alongside the local representatives of Tough Mudder okay. out there. So I don't think it will be him just running around with a with a phone trying his best. I imagine it'll have some level of production values out there. Fantastic. Loving it. I'll be there. I'll be watching that. Charge my battery I, I would, up. Yeah, I will try and watch as much as I can, but this weekend I'm actually at an event, Alan. Oh, are you running this week? Are you running? Are you are you fitness in and what are you doing this weekend? I'm not actually running. It's a Decker Strong up at Cliveroff, so it's absolutely no running, which is probably good given my, my knees are still uh, still warm at this moment in time. But yeah, I'm going back. I think it's the first time I've done Decker Strong solo. I reckon, by the way, I reckon the, the intern who's also doing it, I reckon she'll beat me. <laughs> I'd take you up on that bet, but I think she's going to beat you as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly sure she she's going to beat me because when we did Decker Fit together, the only thing that stopped her from beating me was I was slightly faster on the runs. Yes, I, I think in pure obstacles, yeah, I I only um, outdid her by four minutes, and on a pure five k, I can run a lot faster. Than, than her uh, than that no actually it wasn't even four minutes I think it was like two minutes so yeah I'm fairly confident she'll beat me so we'll pick that thread up next week Alan we no certainly doubt. will we certainly uh, will also a shout out to um, Patreon and um, good friend of the show uh, Shah Malone um, one of our, our, our favourite listeners um, like all of our patrons are favourite listeners and all our listeners are favourite listeners but one of our favourite listeners <laughs> She is heading out to Decca Malaga. So rather than come to a industrialized um, town in Lancashire, she's going to paradise. I hope it rains. Oh, yeah, that's evil. That's nasty. That is evil. That is. I'm I'm kidding, Charles. Charles, I I'm incredibly jealous. Have a wonderful time out there. And anyone else who's going to Malaga. The Deca Spain team are some of the nicest people. Uh, say hello to Jordi, the hype man for us, please. And if you see Angel, the um, overall organizer, say hi to him for me as well. So enjoy anyone who's going to Malaga. Is there anything else happening this weekend or are we still in that kind of lull? We're still in that type of lull, yeah, and it's like, you know, it's a lula. It's a lula we're all along. That's all we're bothered about. That's all we're bothered about. So... I want to know who do you think is going to win the ultimate showdown, Alan? We, we've been thinking about this. Who is your money on? Is it going to be Becky Neal or Will Chung? <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> Becky. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think so. Will does have the endurance background, but I, I think over. Eight hours, I think Becky will have his, his number. I, I think it would have to be a lot longer for Will's more experience in it. Not saying that Becky couldn't uh, kick his butt on WTM, given enough training, but uh, Will does have the, the endurance background. But I don't think over eight hours it, it will make much difference. No, and I think a lot of people are talking about, you know, like John Alburn and is used to running like super long distance ultras now. This is eight hours. This is it's anybody's game, you know. I think if I'm honest, I think more in the ladies, I think it can be a closer call with Chris Rogloski and, and Lindsay Webster. I think Lindsay's probably gonna just pip her, if I'm honest. Um purely because I think she'll get the she'll get the speed up quite early on, make up a gap, and I think it's gonna be hard for Chris to catch her. If we were talking 12 hours plus, I think it'd be Chris's. Um but eight hours, I think Lindsay's got it. I've just got a sneaky feeling that in the men's, John's not going to win. And I, I hate to say that um, because he has got the pace and everything else, but I just think that Ryan Atkins is going to be running well. And I think we've got a few others on there that have got a lot of pace that in eight hours could be up, could be up there and challenge him. We know how good John Alban is, but I just think it's going to be... I don't think it's his race. I don't think it's his race. I'd be minded to agree because I don't think Ryan has ever lost a race 
which is eight hours or more. Mm, yeah. I, please, listener, correct me if I've got that statistic wrong, but I'm fairly confident that that was a statistic that was banded round once, that he's never lost a race of eight hours or longer. We should also mention in the ladies, but as well as Chris and Lindsay, you've also got Katie Knight out there, who's an exo uh, world's toughest mother. You've got Nicole, who is a accomplished OCR athlete, I wouldn't particularly say I'd fancy her over an endurance event, but you just never know, do you? It, it could be anyone's game. Plus, it's on sand. And some athletes have more experience, particularly the ones who've been out to Abu Dhabi, have more experience from running on sand than others. Well, I think, was it the last time out, didn't Ryan take John over beast distance, if I remember rightly? I believe he did. And I'm fairly sure that Ryan has been to Abu Dhabi a few times and does have that experience on on sand and American racers have more opportunities to run in sand than UK racers tend to have. Well, it depends where you are in the in the grand scheme of things, but outside of perhaps uh, perhaps Becky Neal, she might be our uh, our hope because she can run on them fabulous beaches down, down near her. Um, but yeah, we don't get that much opportunity to run on sand particularly that kind of sand, the loose fitting, as the sand tends to be compacted because it's wet. And, and I think that's going to take it out of some of the runners. I think you're going to find some of the runners are going to going to struggle on it. It's also eight hours, you know, and in eight hours, a lot can happen. You know, as we, we saw last year at WTM, when um, Sean Merriweather was, was smashing it, you know, and he, he fell off the hay bales. Anything can happen in a race of this distance. Um Hopefully, it's a clean race for everyone, and the, the best, the best run of the day wins um, purely by ability, as opposed to someone having an incident and not being able to carry on. I hope we're going to have a clean race throughout. I agree, and also I want to give a couple of shout outs to some other potential racers, Ulrik and Ida from Denmark are also going to be there. Mm. So it's going to be such a stacked field. Should we give a shout out to the English contingent? Uh, Let's give a quick shout out to Thomas Hunt, to Will Chung, who we've already mentioned, to Becky Neal, Duncan Francis, uh, Megan Tranter, who I believe had a preview show. We've not done a preview show, but I believe Megan had a preview show yep. on her podcast feed, so go and listen to that. Uh, Jamie McNeil, Dasos Ganella, and John Alban, who has finally been moved from the finish section, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is good to see. Thank you for that, Matt. And yeah, if you want to know the full list, go over to Obstacle Racing Media. They've got a list of all the athletes broken down by country. So, for example, if you want to support the Ugandan representative, his name's down there. Awesome. And I think on that, end, I think we're done. I think we are. Whatever you're doing this weekend, have fun, everyone. If anyone's there at Clibraw, I'll be there early. It's so probably about 9 a.m., give or take. Come and say hi. Uh, Alan, what are you up to? Uh, working. <laughs> well, well, if anyone happens, I've got a mortgage to, in... to pay for now, and I've got to work. <laughs> you do. If anyone happens to be in Barnsley, pop in and say hi to Alan. And on that, it's a goodbye from me. And listeners, it's goodbye from me. One last thing: if you are wanting to go to the awards night, we are down to twenty tickets left remaining. So get in there, get your ticket. There's only twenty tickets for the award night remaining. Um, Go onto the UKOCR website page, which is UKOCR.com, and you'll find them there. In the meantime, you take care, you stay safe, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye.